good morning from Blackpool Pleasure Beach and what a gorgeous day it is and it's a very exciting day for the UK amusement industry because today is the press day for Blackpool Pleasure Beach's new ride Icon. It opens to the public on Friday and today we've got a special preview which we're going to take you guys along for quite a lot planned for the day just to give you an idea of what's happening. We have a press conference first of all where we have the opportunity to hear about the ride from the park's owners, the Thompson family and also from the Mac family who are obviously behind Mac Rides, the people who've actually made Icon the ride. Really, really great day today. It's great. Thank you very much to Blackpool Pleasure Beach for inviting us. Unfortunately, Stevie couldn't get the time off work, so it is just me today. So, sorry Stevie fans. Stevie will be here on Friday for the public opening day. We really can't wait. I can't wait for Stevie to ride it. I'm kind of sad that I have to ride it for the first time on my own, but it will be really good. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Director of Marketing at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, Robert Owen. Thank you very much for that very warm welcome. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Blackpool Pleasure Beach on what is really a historic day in the 122 year history that the Thompson family have operated an amusement park here in the South Beach area of Blackpool. Members of the press, media guests, industry colleagues and friends, we are thrilled that today we will unveil to you for the first time the biggest investment the Thompson family have ever made. Please welcome uh, Amanda Thompson, OBE, uh, Managing Director of Blackpool Pleasure Beach, uh, Nick Thompson, Deputy Managing Director of Blackpool Pleasure Beach. We also have Michael Mack, CEO of Europa Park, Board of Director for Mac Rides, and Founder and Managing Director of Mac Media. Uh, Andreas Anderson is also with us, Chairman of the Board for IARPA, the International Association of Amusement Parks and Attractions, and Jacob Parr, the Vice President of IARPA Europe, Middle East and Africa. We're also joined by Torsten Kobele, Chief Officer for Sales and Marketing at Matt Rides. And here, Steve Hughes, Director of Engineering and Projects for Blackpool Pleasure Beach, Alex Payne, our Technical Director for Blackpool Pleasure Beach, uh, I'd also really like to welcome Andy Hine, who is the chairman of the Roller Coaster Club of Great Britain. Uh, also, Paul Burton, who is the chairman of the European Coaster Club. And last, but of course not least, uh, Glenn Robertson, composer for what is the Icon soundtrack. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our spokesperson. <laughs> Mr. Simon Calder, I can see your hand up there. Uh, good morning and thank you very much indeed for this um, great opportunity. Um, just one quick question, I'm not sure if one of your technical people could kindly uh, uh, answer it, but it says on the information that I've been reading very uh, assiduously, the velocity of launch is twice that of the launch of a commercial airliner. Can you please explain? Thank you. I'm looking at my technical team here to help me with this. So the, the velocity of launch is twice that of a commercial airliner. Uh, Alex Payne, our technical director, do you want to start with that one? Uh, thanks, Robert. Um, <laughs> that's the wording in the marketing brochure, as opposed to the technical brochure. But um, I, I think what we're trying to say is the um, if you've got a commercial airliner and that thing sets up down the runway, it's, it's quite a, 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 a pushing it back. Um, if that's all you've done, frankly, you ain't seen nothing yet. When you, when you go on this ride, I've never felt acceleration like this. Uh, unless you're a, a racing driver, I don't think anybody else would have done either. Yeah, and uh, Thorsten from that ride. Yeah, good morning, everyone. So I can add something to Alex. So the launch is itself, so we have a maximum power of 1.7 megawatts in each launch, and that's, that's converted in 2,250 horsepower. I want so many people to come to Blackpool to visit us at Pleasure Beach and to actually enjoy Icon because it's an amazing ride. I can say I've not even ridden it, but I've watched it, I've seen it, and that to me is really good. I'm going on it today with all of you for the first time, so I know by watching it how everyone feels when they come off it. I only hope that I feel as good as they do. But um, most people who know me know that I'm not the biggest fan of roller coasters, but what I am is I got taken all around the world by um, Jacob, Ball and Andreas, and, they, and Michael Mack as well, and they made me test rides 
all over the place to make sure that the ride that was created here for us today was something that had a little bit of everything that I loved in it too. And certainly Nick, my brother, he went all over, really ensuring that we got the ride that's going to thrill you all so much today. Please, anyone, if you've got a question. I think we've got a question at the back here, thank you. Thank you. Just picking up on that. How important is this ride to Blackpool as well as to the Blackpool Pleasure Beach? I'll take that one. Uh, I think it's essential for Blackpool because I'm a huge fan of Blackpool as a resort and I think that reinvesting in our town is really what we need to do all the time because we need to change Blackpool. We need to make Blackpool great. It's always been great but it just needs to move up a notch. Each year we have reinvested everything that we could possibly reinvest in this town and I think really our family has been reinvesting in Blackpool for many, many years and the audiences and the people are coming back in their droves and thankfully we have sunny May days. May days might not be holidays but they're here and they're sunny and I think there's no better place to be than Blackpool on a sunny day and really, truthfully, I hope all have a fantastic time, not just here at Pleasure Beach, but your time in Blackpool as well, because Blackpool has so much to offer. There's a little bit of Blackpool in everyone, I believe. Robert, can I add to that as well? The, the thing is with Blackpool, it's very, very historical, but the, the Pleasure Beach in its self right is one of the most historical amusement parks in the world. And when you look at the DNA of the park, it came from Coney Island. You know, with the switchback railway developing on through to some amazing rides, the first loopy coaster within Europe. You know, the Avalanche, another great map ride celebrating 30 years at the Pledge Beach. But there are two amazing families that are involved with this the Thompson family, that have been there from pretty much day one, but also the Mack family, that create some of the most amazing roller coasters in the world. Um, and so from our point of view, from a roller coaster enthusiast point of view, this is the mecca. This is iconic in itself. Not only the ride, but the park. So to see this investment of 16 million for a ride of this size is breathtaking. And, you know, for you guys, we've got to say thanks because, you know, it's going to be absolutely an amazing ride. Not just for Platform Pleasure Beach, but for the UK and the musical park industry as well. So thank you. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> so yeah, what was the process behind picking the architecture design that you did for Icon? Yeah. Uh, okay, um, I can tell you that I have the most extraordinary dreams. Um, the weirdest things happen, happen in my dreams. It drives my husband mental because I wake up in the middle of the night and write ridiculous things down. But um, initially, it was all about the birth of this ride. And so I, I thought that it was probably a really good idea to have a nice cherry blossom tree blowing in the wind and that's how it all started in my mind. Now Nick will tell a totally different story, he'll tell you it started in the ride manufacturers and um, how he created everything but the, the theming and the thought behind it all stemmed from a cherry blossom tree blowing in the wind and the ground cracking beneath it and shards of steel coming up a bit like what you saw in the commercial earlier and that's really how I conceived all the styling of everything because I can't say I designed anything, I styled everything and I think that's, that's, a, that's the difference we, we don't necessarily theme things obviously we have Wallace and Gromit, Alice in Wonderland and Valhalla and Nickelodeon and they're heavily themed parts of the Pleasure Beach but um, this is very much styled and I think that's the way Black and Pleasure Beach has been for many years and we have, we have a lot of superb architecture here. My grandfather was at uh, university in Chicago with Frank Lloyd Wright so he was very involved with architecture so I think having really interesting architecture means a lot to the family. Thank you. Nick, just, just, bring you a just following on if that, this was part of your question that the the creation of the ride first started possibly around as early as seven years ago when the new development of relief coasters started, which was the inspiration. And following that, uh, myself and the fifth generation of the business started um, going around looking at uh, coasters around uh, the world with the new style and the new developments in technology that have been created. And 
So then we went out to vary uh, uh, went up to out up to over five for six manufacturers and put in all the elements and the space we had available on the park and really they've created we whittled it down to Mac and it was actually the engineers who finally decided on the best manufacturer possible to make this ride and that was their decision to make uh, uh, to go with Mac and make this ride. Yes, we had a question from here. Scott, go ahead, you've got the microphone. Oh, it's Scott from Pleasure Beach Experience. So throughout the whole process of Icon's construction, which was the most exciting for you guys here at the Pleasure Beach? Nick, could you uh, Steve, go ahead. Today. <laughs> Steve, I think when we were here on Saturday, that was quite overwhelming. We had some boarding card people here on Saturday, and um, it was, I certainly it took my breath away, the reaction of everybody when they went on the ride. And I think Steve and I were still just stood back and watched, and we were both felt really overwhelmed and humbled by everybody's reaction. So it was, it was a lovely sunny day too, so that was good. But I think really making families happy, we did it on Saturday, so that was great. For me, the most ex exciting point of the construction um, was the actual putting the last piece of track on and being, uh, you know, 60 foot in the air, hammering in the last bolt with the warning beacons beeping about it being overweight. But that was the most exciting <laughs> part. Um, Alex Ridley from Max Radio and the Iron Man. My questions for Nick and Amanda, really. When it comes to the design process of this ride, in comparison with your father designing the big one, which was him effectively working with Aaron. How has it been that this collaborative effort between the two families, how has it differed compared to working on the establishment of other rides? Well, as I explained earlier, it was a long, long process with loads and loads of designs from different manufacturers, and we whittled it down to, to two, and then the engineers went out with me to all the manufacturers and uh, it was the engineers, um, director of engineering, who they, they decided which manufacturer was the best from their experience of touring around all the factories and uh, witnessing the experience of seeing everything go to the quality of the engineers in place. So that obviously was Mac, and that's how you know we uh, came to the final decision. But we have, I think, another three or four Mac rides here, so we're very well aware of the quality of their eyes. But also, it's very, very important to us to have such a good working relationship with the manufacturer. Um, the Mack family and the Thompson family have worked closely together for many years. Not only have we bought rides from them, but also family members have worked for them. I personally worked with the Mack family for 13 years, producing shows for them. So, I've known Michael for many, many years, and we have a really, really good, strong relationship. And Magnus, um, my nephew, he worked in the Mac factory actually on this ride as he's studying engineering. He's not here today because he's at Bristol University, and he's very sorry not to be here, but um, he's studying engineering because of working in the Mac factory, and I think really that just shows it's in the family blood, and also um, we have Tor Gillia here as well, who's my other nephew, and he has worked on all the marketing for the ride as well. So I think there's a lot of family links between the Mack family and the Thompson family, and I think that is a very strong bond, and that's what's unique about this project, certainly, certainly for me. Michael, do you have anything to say about that? Well, first of all, um, a great thing Thompson family and um, to you Amanda and to you Nick. Um, I still had the pleasure to get to know Jeffrey when I was a young kid because he came over once a year to visit the ice show in uh, Roos because Amanda did with stage work, work with production. It was always a special day when Jeffrey came over when I was a kid being 10 years, 11 years old and Mans was visiting over having um, lunch at our house and so for me kind of a dream came true putting a ride um, into Blackpool Pleasure Beach. With it. It's truly iconic, can't wait um, to ride it. And it's just a family history, a family bonding, and um, we still have close relations, not only that we steal 
one of your former skaters, Ian, to work with us, but um, we're still ordering costumes, we're still working closely together. So for me, it's a dream coming true, and also um, that your technical people choose to write, not the bosses, how you said. It's a really quality sign of what happened in Mark Rides, and so it's not only the family one, but also the quality, which made the decision um, easier, and I'm just proud. This was a complex ride to build. What were the biggest challenges? And also looking at it now, what are you most pleased with? Um, if I start with that, um, the, the biggest challenge is when everyone who knows the park and the ride intensity of every other structure uh, and other rides we've got on the park was finding space uh, to fit this in. So I sort of wandered around uh, different areas of the parks for quite a few weeks and then came up with areas that could possibly fit things in and then sort of left it up to the designers to see how they would join it all together. Uh, but it's incredibly, incredibly difficult to do. And I don't believe uh, until sort of five years ago the technology was out there to do what we wanted to create. And now it is. And it mixes and interacts with 15, 15 times with other rides, which is one of the unique and world-beating uh, facts about this ride. I think that um, Jacob Ball, who's here with us today, he can say something about this because he was very involved with the actual designing of the ride, fitting it into the space. So he worked very closely with Mac and the, the, the designers of the ride here. I actually think it was, a, as, as Nick pointed out correctly, it was a big challenge for, for, for Mac guys and also for Blackpool to fit such a ride in such a narrow space. I mean, we, we talk about big amusement parks, which have usually lots of space, but looking here at Blackpool, we have a very narrow space, and when you look at the, at the length of the ride, and it's a very, very long ride, and it has very diverse elements, and there's two launches to fit and squeeze all that in, into this existing surface, and with all those rides existing, I think that has been really a true achievement of, of the engineers and of the team here at Blackpool. Thank you. So, tech on the technical speaking about that, so um, we use kind of technology that the entire area were 3D scanned. So because all the existing ride, old rides, there were not all the engineering documents in place. So we use technologies to scan the entire area. And basically with that data, we, the, the coaster was then designed around it. And it really hits some of the uh, other rides very closely with the safety envelope where we are very tight and it matches out perfectly. That was one of the big challenges and actually integrating a ride in such a challenge environment will at the end create a better ride because you have all this interaction with, with the other the surrounding environment. Is this a game changer for Blackpool Pleasure Beach and for Blackpool as a resort? Where do you see it going in the future? Well, and as you know, um, we at the Pleasure Beach choose to invest year on year. We keep money in the resort. And of course it's a game changer for Blackpool because we're bringing £60 million worth of investment to the resort. So with all the advertising that we do, hopefully we'll bring a lot of people into the resort and hopefully every, every business within resort will benefit from us. Um, hopefully they'll come through our door too, but um, certainly we don't we're not in this for ourselves, we're in this to maintain Blackpool as the number one resort in the UK. And so I can assure you, our family have been working here for many, many years, for well over 100 years, so quite frankly we don't intend on going anywhere. So we want Blackpool to remain the number one resort and we want Pleasure Beach to remain the number one attraction within the resort. So we will continue to invest here, yes. And as you mentioned, you know, and the future, uh, I mean, as I said earlier, Probably the concept started for this seven years ago, but in that time we've developed so many other things in the meantime. Uh, but uh, I know from uh, working with my son Morgan, who's working here since he was 12, and visiting parks around the world and talking to other manufacturers, I have about a, another three ideas for the next uh, the next rides coming up, uh, for, which will take us into another seven or eight years in the future, so don't worry, there's ideas there for the future. Yep. Uh, I think Andy Hyde would just like to say a few words, Chairman of the Royal in, in response to that question, um, from a coaster enthusiast point of view, the new ride is attracting uh, great interest, not just in the UK, but from worldwide enthusiasts, and people are waiting for the opening now, so, so they can come over from wherever they are in the world, just to ride it. 
So it doesn't just put Blackpool on the UK map, it puts it on the World Coaster map, which it already was anyway, because it was already got some, some great coasters, but this just enhances that position and means that it, st it stays at its top position as, as one of the best places in the world to ride coasters for a long, long time more. I'm uh, Chris from Blackseat Blackout. Um, what was your biggest inspiration for designing Icon? The biggest inspiration for designing Icon? You, what, do you mean? Well, Thrill Seeker, that was the biggest inspiration. We wanted to bring Thrill Seekers back to resort because we'd spent a lot of time developing family entertainment with Nickelodeon and Family Rides with Wallace and Gromit. So we wanted to target the Thrill Seeker. And so that's one reason why we brought Icon to this resort. Is there any particular rides or roller coasters in the world that you kind of looked at and for? Uh, well, I suppose. Uh, I don't know how many years ago it was, but the first relief coaster was the first twinkling of an idea of a, a different element which hadn't been done before. Uh, and I think that would have been uh, Cheetah Hunt at uh, Bush Gardens. So that, that was the first inkling of any inspiration. So I've just come out of the press conference, it was really interesting to learn about some of the facts behind the ride and some interviews with the characters involved throughout the development of the ride. We've just been escorted through the park now for the official opening ceremony of the ride, which will be conducted by the Thompson and Matt families. Well, a very good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, welcome down here to the ride launch for the press and media of Icon the Ride down here. We have now invited the families up to cut the ribbon and open Icon officially for the press and media. So if I can get a countdown from you guys and helping out and we can count down from five. Are you ready? Here we go. Five, four, four three, two, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, Icon the Ride is now officially open. Let's give a massive round of applause to the Thompson and the Mac family. Ride of Icon. Here we go, folks. And we are off the first official ride of Icon here with the Thompson and Mac family. advantage of the coaster as we head in underneath the main entrance sign. Be careful not to fall down the stairs while I'm built vlogging. It's a visually very impressive coaster. A lot of landscaping work. General feel around the area has been completed. As we see the Thompson and Mac family just disembarking the train after their first rides and we are on our way now for our first rides into the station itself for the very first time really really well decorated it's beautiful in here love the lighting the effect of these mirrors on the wall
first ride on Icon. Back in the queue to get another go now. Hope you enjoyed watching me having my first ride on Icon. Fantastic ride. I'll let you know more thoughts once I've had another couple of goes on it. Backseat blackout, boys. How'd you enjoy your first ride? Brilliant. Yeah, superb. A lot of air time. Yeah, there's loads of air time, isn't there? Fantastic. Say, yeah, possibly one less in the car. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have a few more goes next week. Yeah, agreed. Another few goes, and then we'll see how we, what we think. Well, basically, yeah, um, a few years ago, okay. <laughs> yeah, I came here and, um, well, not came here, I, I saw Cedar Point building Maverick, and I was like, we need one of those, those product goes, it's like, need our answer. That is pretty yeah. much the answer to our Maverick. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Good. It's a good answer to it. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, just nice, isn't it? Yeah, really enjoy the, the floatiness to it. Everything seems balanced on it, like there's nothing too extreme. And yeah. Too tame. It's got a nice balance. Yeah, it's like a nice, yeah. nice pace throughout, isn't it? Yeah, I'm kind of wish it did kind of hit that extreme at tier points, but you know, before I've ever seen it. Yeah. yeah. I did think it was really good. Yeah, really, really enjoyed it. Can't wait to try this though. in the kind of second car close to the front of the train and once on the very back row of the train absolutely incredible on the back especially overall though really really good ride i wouldn't say it was too intense at no point during the ride does it feel really intense it's just really really fun throughout the ride throughout the ride you kind of you feel this great feeling of freedom as if you're able to move around the car and put your arms up especially if you put your arms up you feel really really free in the train yeah. Might go and have another go in a minute, I'm not sure yet, but as I was saying, just absolutely unbelievable, really really enjoyed it. I'm not sure where it ranks yet, it, it's definitely up there, it's one of my favourite coasters. This favourite element of the ride, probably the acceleration as you hit the second launch and go up into that Immelman. Before you know what's going on, you're kind of on the inversion and then heading back down again into the second part of the circuit. Just really, really enjoyable. Great fun ride. Get yourself to Pleasure Beach and go and enjoy it. It's a great, great addition to the park and really fits in. The interactions with the existing rides here in the park are absolutely stunning. And it, with, especially with your arms up, you kind of feel so close to it at various points throughout the circuit. look around the Icon merch. Oh, backpacks here and teddy bears which I'm sure Stevie will want one of those on Friday. Got various different bits of merchandise for the other roller coasters in the park as well. And Grand National for example there. I like this Icon print that shows the layout of the ride and how it interacts with the other rides. It's really good magnets and steel water bottles, a chocolate lollipop there. Icon beanie hat, don't need one of those today, we might need it when we get back in towards the cold season again. And coasters for the coaster. And that looks like a lovely warm coat, 
which we definitely don't need today, but again, it might be quite, quite useful in Blackpool later in the season. Oh, it'd be rude not to have a fifth go, then, wouldn't it? Go on, let's have, let's have a fifth go. I want to do the front row this time, I've not done the front yet. ridden icon five times now that's it's getting up there it's getting up there as one of my favorite coasters absolutely love it it's just really really fun throughout the air time is insane it's absolutely unbelievable just it's so much fun as i said it's not really really intense but it doesn't need to be it's not super fast it's not the fastest thing in the world it's not the tallest thing in the world it doesn't have the most inversions it doesn't matter it's a load of fun it's just a really really great fun ride so smooth the i was surprised how much i enjoyed the front row because everyone had been telling me our oh, back row is where it's at i've done back row twice i just rode the front row then and the front row is really good as well it's just a really really good ride throughout highly recommend getting yourself down here to the pleasure beach and checking it out just come and give it a go it's unbelievable the appearances are deceptive a lot of people have said oh, it looks a bit slow it doesn't look that good but judge it once you've ridden it it's really really fun as i said i'm reluctant to say it is at the top of my list just yet but maybe after friday when me and stevie have ridden it together we'll let you know again then so i'm gonna leave that video there for today hope you've enjoyed my coverage here of the icon press day absolutely fantastic day make sure you hit that subscribe button to follow our adventures and we will see you guys soon on friday for the icon grand opening Thanks for watching guys, bye.